everybody, I'm Dee Brown and welcome to Kingdom Thinking Enterprises. Today's topic is about degrees of depression. Yes, and knowing your triggers. What sets you off? What are the signs that help you understand when you're depressed? I want to bring three points out. The first point I like to call a cloudy day, right? So a cloudy day degree of depression is when the weather just kind of has you down. So maybe your trigger for weather is rain, snow, cloudy. Uh, what else is there? It's gloomy out. Maybe the snow has turned into dirty snow because everybody's driven all over it. And so now it just looks disgusting and it's cold and that feeling. Well, that degree of depression is, that's the one I get all the time. So I need as much sun in my life as possible, y'all, because I can't do it. I can't do it. And I live in Indianapolis, and today it is gloomy, it is wet, and it is yucky, but that's okay, because I just got back from Savannah, and it was very nice, y'all, mm -hmm. so I enjoyed that one. However, when you have that cloudy day syndrome, what happens is you feel gloomy, you feel blah, and heaven forbid if, you know, something's going on with you physically to aid in that. And so what I would suggest and recommend is that you do a little something to help brighten your day. So in this particular case, what I like to do is and so I would suggest putting flowers in your living room, in your bedroom, in your bathroom, in your foyer, in your kitchen. Just have the place really beautiful and alive and carefree and colorful with flowers. Flowers just make all the difference in the world. Now, some of you may be allergic to flowers or some of you just might not like flowers like I like flowers. In that case, I would suggest that you take the spray, the potpourri, and put it in your carpet. Perhaps you can get some plug-ins that you really just, the smell that you just absolutely love. Plug those in all around your house. So wherever that is, just plug, plug, plug. So that fragrance and that smell, put them in your kitchen, your bathroom, your living room, your bedroom. Just put it everywhere so that fragrance can just pick you up and give you that sense of renewal and refreshing. Also, you can do candles. And um, those candles obviously can move from room to room and go with you. And that will help you with not being so heavy hearted. Okay, number two, I like to call the um, the inside feeling where you just can't place exactly what's wrong, right? You just get something in your gut and you just feel blah. You don't know why. You can't really explain it. It's just there. Maybe you woke up with it. Maybe you were fine. And then suddenly it was there. Pity your stomach. That one can cause you to feel anxiety. It can cause you to feel fearful, restless. Uh, you can feel annoyed with that one. And sometimes there's just this nagging sensation, this nagging feeling. First things first, if you are a born again believer, my first suggestion is take authority. If you have that feeling and you just can't figure out how did this get started or where did this come from first, I would take authority over that. So I would bind the spirit of depression, bind the spirit of weightiness, because sometimes we are just influenced by the things that are in the atmosphere. And so I would take authority over that. If you are not a born again believer, or if you've taken authority and that hasn't changed anything, then my suggestion to you is to get quiet, right? In your quietness, I want you to take either a two-minute, a 10-minute, or a 30-minute break. That's it. A two-minute, a 10-minute, or a 30-minute break. Within that two minutes, say you're hectic, you're running, you're at work, you're busy, you're with the kids, everybody's going, everybody wants this and they want that, you have all these errands to run, you got stuff to do, you're trying to run the business. 
go to the bathroom, take two minutes. Nobody will ever know. Take your two minutes. Within that two minutes, you're not trying to fix anything. You're not trying to fix your life. You're not trying to fix the situation. You're not trying to do any of those things. All you're going to do in these two minutes is get quiet. So all those anxieties, all those uh, strains and stresses, and just put them on the shelf. Don't take it. Here they are. Put that on the shelf. Okay. We'll leave it there. Don't worry. It'll be there when you're done. You're going to go to the bathroom and just breathe. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, and you're going to continue to do that. If you have to, set your watch, set your timer for your two minutes, and you do it the whole time. Within that time, you're not going to think about your problems. You're not going to think about the person at work. You're not going to think about your supervisor or the people you are supervising. You're not going to think about the kids. You're not going to think about all the errands that you have. You're not going to think about the money that you're trying to make or the money that you uh, did make. And now you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with it. You're not going to do any of that. All you're going to do in those two minutes is literally breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Two minutes. I like to suggest setting the timer. That way you won't keep looking at your watch to see what time it is, right? So if you just set your timer, your two minutes, take your breaths. I promise you'll feel better when you're done. Okay, and if you're going to do your 10 minutes, say you need a 10-minute mind break. Sometimes we just need to relax our minds because it's mind blowing. So if you're having a hard time, if you can't pinpoint what's wrong, you just have that nagging feeling on the inside and something is just like, what is that? I don't know. Just take your 10 minute, okay? Your 10 minute mind break. So for your 10 minute mind break, all you're going to do is sit quietly for 10 minutes. Again, set your timer so you won't have to worry about looking at it. And again, this may mean, need to be scheduled time because if you have children, especially small children, or if you um, are working and then you have to go home and tend to family and that sort of thing, that's okay. Life happens. We understand that. That's fine. All you're going to do is schedule your 10 minute time. Okay. Just like you scheduled all those other things, just like you scheduled baseball practice and golf practice and softball practice and all of that for the kids, you schedule your 10 minutes, your 10 minutes. If you just cannot find any time, I mean, there's just no time in your day. And sometimes that happens. Then your 10 minutes is going to be in the car. No music, no, um, unless it's instrumental, not heavy metal, just instrumental. No um, talking on the phone, none of that, nothing that has words. You're just going to take that 10 minutes. If you have to do the 10 minutes in the car, then I want you to put on your quiet, relaxing music, instrumental only. Take that time. You're going to breathe, right? Now, your challenge is going to be because you're in traffic, your brain is used to thinking because you do it all the time while you're in traffic. So your challenge is going to be to relax your mind. You're not thinking about your challenges of the day. You're not thinking about your stresses of the day. You're not even thinking about, okay, after I take pick up the kids from practice, now I have to feed them. And, you know, then I have this business meeting to go to after work and blah, 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 blah. blah. You're not going to do all that. Your challenge is going to be just to breathe, listen to the music, absorb the music. That's all you're thinking about. You're listening to the music. You're thinking about how did the composer feel about this music? How do I feel about this music? You're just listening to the music, okay? Any of those other thoughts that pop up from the stressors, you are just going to release those. So any of those other stressors, stressors that pop up, you're just going to release those. Those have nothing to do with you right now. It's not what we're dealing with. We're just going to listen to the music. If you have time to take your 10 minutes, then you're going to take your 10 minutes. 
And that 10 minutes can be jogging in the park, if you're a jogger. I'm not a jogger. Um, that 10 minutes can be, let's say, um, taking a walk. You're just going to get settled, get quiet, take your mind break, take your 10 minute mind break and relax. Okay, so if you got a nice comfy chair, if you have to sit in your closet so nobody can find you, then that's perfectly fine. If you have a hard time controlling your thoughts for that long, that's understandable. Start with three minutes, okay, and then increase every day. And I want you to practice this at least three days in a row, okay? And if you if you're if you're if you know you can't do the 10 minutes you know okay there's no way I can be quiet in my mind for 10 minutes that's fine start with three minutes no outside noise except instrumental music you just sit breathe when those thoughts come you release the thoughts we're gonna put them on the shelf they'll be there when you're done okay so you have permission to sit those on the shelf and then breathe and relax breathe and relax when you do this I want you to relax your shoulders okay as you're taking those deep breaths, you're going to relax your shoulders. You're going to relax your arms. You're going to relax your legs. You're going to relax your feet. You're going to wiggle your toes and you're going to squeeze all that stress right out of your toes. Okay? So at the end of your 10 minutes, you should feel extremely refreshed. If you have to, you're going to do the 30 minute break. Okay? Your 30 minute shutdown. If you need to take a 30 minutes to shut down because you are just like, ah, I don't know what's going on. Go ahead, get in the tub, turn on the bubbles, turn on the music. Again, that's quiet music. And, um, or take a walk or you can just get your personal time in, okay? If you do this, again, making sure you're quieting yourself on the inside. You're not talking about your problems, but instead you are acknowledging God in all your ways, right? You're saying, God, I just thank you. I've really had a stressful day. I'm not sure why I'm feeling this way or I have these feelings on the inside. I feel like this. Try your best to identify what your feelings are. So if you think you're angry, then you can say, God, I'm angry. I'm just trying to figure out why I'm angry. Or I'm anxious. Why am I anxious? Or I'm excited. Why am I excited and it's bothering me, right? Because sometimes our excitement brings fear because we're so excited about the things that God is doing in our lives, but we're fearful about what is next and how that is going to look later. Excuse me, guys. That's my dog who's snoring like a man. But we want to make sure that we are engaging God during this time because the more you can engage God into that conversation the more he can reveal to you what's going on on the inside of you so if you have your time for your 30 minute break even if that's in the tub if you have a house hey take a shower for 30 minutes if you want to right and that shower time can just be that refreshing letting that water just run over you you just relaxing in that experience taking those deep breaths in that experience allowing God to minister to you and again hmm how do i feel identify your feelings once you've identified if you feel anxious or stressed or uh, fearful or restless annoyed bothered why am i those things once you identify why, with whom are those things? Sometimes you feel that way with others. Sometimes we feel that way with ourselves. And so we'll need to know that, okay? So make sure you're identifying what's happening on the inside of you. And if you don't know the answer the first time you do it, that's fine. You're going to do it again the next day, okay? If you have to, do this up to three days in a row. If you do it in three days in a row correctly, you should get your answer by then, okay? So if you're not getting an answer by day one and day two, I really want you to rest your mind. And when I say rest your mind, that just means breathing, releasing all your cares, 
right? Because again, you're going to put those cares on the shelf. They're not going anywhere. They're for you. You can have them. I'm not trying to take them from you. Don't freak out. They're right there. But you're going to need that me time. And with that me time, you're going to be able to release yourself and rest yourself. And God will be able to minister to you what's wrong, what's going on on the inside. And finally, number three is the one I like to call the freak out. <laughs> so with the freak out, you might be crying uncontrollably. You might want to scream. You might be angry. You might just be enraged. You might just feel the pressure and you're going from zero to 24. And you're like, Aha. sometimes we're there. We can't identify why we're there or how we got there. We just know that oh, I looked up and I'm there. So in that situation, I would suggest to go ahead and be that. If you're angry, be angry. If you're upset, be upset. If you are mad, go ahead and be mad, right? So the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not. But I love this particular translation. It says, and that's in Ephesians 4 and 26. It says, and don't sin by letting anger gain control over you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. So I just want you to know, he does not say don't be angry. You have permission. Your feelings belong to you. God gave you your feelings. He gave you your emotions. He gave you your mind. He gave you your will. All of those things are in your soul. And sometimes our soul is talking to us and it's trying to tell us something. It's trying to say, hey, this is for how I feel. And because this is how I feel, this is where this is why you feel the way you feel. And you need to know that. You need to identify that. You need to be connected enough to yourself to say, hmm, this is a little off. Why do I feel this way? Sometimes we're so busy with life. We're so busy with our stressors. We're so busy just trying to breathe and survive and live for the day that we don't realize we're not listening to what our soul was trying to tell us. And then we get to the point where we're so overwhelmed, we're freaking out and it's like, oh my God, I can't take it anymore. And then that's when we have trouble. And so we need to practice listening to our souls in other times. But if you find yourself in that state at that point, that's fine. Go ahead. And if you feel like, oh my God, I just got to cry, go ahead and cry. There's more room on the outside of you than there is on the inside of you. If you feel like you need to scream and holler, then go ahead and do that. If you feel like you need to punch something, then go to the gym, hit the punching bag, go to your bedroom, hit the pillows. All I would ask is that you do this in a, in a controlled environment. What do I mean by that? Make sure you are not freaking out in front of the kids. Okay, little people are very precious people and they usually respond based on how you respond. And when I say kids, I mean from ages, I just got born all the way up. Okay, because infants and babies, they respond based on our feelings. So if you have that child with you in your environment, they're feeling what you're feeling because that's the only way they know to communicate at this point. And so if you're having a meltdown, if you're having a freak out moment, go ahead and have it. If you're in front of the children, I would say reframe yourself or go away from the children. Send them to your to their room. You go to your room or the basement or, you know, whatever, be in two separate areas. If in fact, you have a meltdown. It is in front of the kids because life happens, stuff happens, things happen. If that's the case and you freak out, once you are finished, I want you to turn around, look your children in the eye and apologize. Apologize because you, you lacked that self-control for that moment. Let them understand that it had nothing to do with them. It's not your fault. And that mommy just had a bad day. Dad, man, I'm just having a bad day. And this is how it is for grown-ups sometimes. Reassure your children that they are not the cause of your meltdown. You love them very much and you ask them to pray for you. I'm telling you, kids are anointed. Let them lay hands on you. See what happens. Mm -hmm. And then send me a comment afterwards because babies be pointing on. I'm just saying. So, if you have to do your freak out moment, go ahead and do your freak out moment. But just know that you're going to come back to this place, right? You're Once you freaked out, now you're going to be settled. Once you're settled, you are going to 
That's all right. Breathe. <laughs> You're going to let it all out. You're going to let it all out. Once it's all out, then you should be a little tired. And you should be relieved. You should feel a little better. Okay? You should feel a little bit better. I'm not saying you should feel back to normal. No, you should just feel a little better. You should feel like a weight was lifted off your shoulders. Um, that pressure that was holding you down in your belly, that should have lifted a little. I, I'm not expecting for it all to be gone, but some of that pressure should have lifted. If it did not, you need to go back because you didn't get it all out. So that means you need to cry some more, or you need to holler some more, or you need to beat the pillow some more, or to punch a bag some more. Because somewhere along the line, you didn't let everything out. This is the time to think about the stressors. This is the time to, okay, what's getting on my nerves? These things are getting on my nerves. Why am I afraid? These things are making me afraid. This is the time to do all your thinking. So while you're crying, going out, do it all right there, okay? Once you've done that, and then you feel that relief. There should be a little relief there. I didn't say you're 100%, but you should feel a little better. Once you feel a little better, then for you, I want you to take your 30 minutes. So whatever, uh, if you have to schedule that 30 minutes, you do that. If you like to bike, if you like to hike, if you like to run, or if you're one of those people that just have to take a bubble bath, then I want you to set your timer, get your 30 minutes. You're biking, hiking, taking a bubble bath. You're doing something, going to get a, a pedicure. You're doing something relaxing for you. Now, within this time, we are not going to deal with the stressors. Whatever the stressors are, again, you take those, put them on the shelf. I promise they'll be there when you're done. But for now, we are simply going to, you've guessed it, breathe. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And in this time, you're going to identify, God, what's going on? Why am I here? I would also suggest you might need to call a friend, somebody you trust, somebody you know who is reliable, somebody who will give you sound, good, godly counsel, somebody who will be on your not quote unquote on your side, but they are willing to listen to you. They're not about to beat you up any more than you've already beat yourself up for the day because I'm sure you've already done that quite well. So um, you might need to get out your journal. If that's the case, get out your journal and I want you to write down your five whys. Why do I feel this way? You got the what, why, when, where, and who, and how. You can identify those and then you can identify your five whys. And in your five whys, what you're really saying is, why do I feel, let's say depressed. It says depression. Why do I feel depressed? My dog died. Well, why am I depressed? Because my dog died. I'm depressed because my dog died because he was my dog since I was five. Well, why am I depressed? Because he was my dog since I was five. I'm depressed because he was my dog since I was five and... My mother gave me that dog, right? So I want you to break down all the five whys. And then why am I depressed? Because that was my dog since I was five and my mother gave me the dog because my mother passed around this time last year. And so once you go through all the five whys, then you've gotten to the bottom generally. And now you can really pinpoint and target that, journal that. Once you're there, now you're going to go back to God. Because he said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your requests made known unto God. Philippians 4. So let me read that to you guys out of this translation because I love this translation. It's out of my new, what is this? The New Living Translation. And it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And so if you find yourself um, in this process and you are journaling, you're getting down to your five whys, you're finding out what's, what's my soul saying to me? What is it really saying on the inside of me? 
And once you've done that, then that's when you're going to be anxious for nothing. Because now you've identified what the anxiousness is. Now you can take it to God with prayer, thanksgiving, and supplication. Now you can say, okay, God, this is where I am. This is bothering me. And this is why it's bothering me as far as I know. God, show me anything else that I need to see here. But for this, I release to you. I give this back to you because obviously I can't change it or I would have done it already. So, Father, I need your assistance. Again, you're going to take some more deep breaths and you're going to allow the peace of God to come into your heart. Now, when God's peace comes, do not resist his peace. It's there for you. It's there to help you. You're not going to continue to think on those things you were thinking on. You're not going to worry because we've just given that to God. Now, in this process, we're going to receive his peace instead. We gave him the anxiety. We gave him the depression. We gave him the fear. We gave him all that. And now we're going to receive the peace of God. Okay. Now, as we've done that, if this is relatively your first time doing this, or you're really new at it, you will probably have to do it at least every day for three days. That's my really, really loud dog snoring, guys. But you will probably have to do this at least every day for three days. Number one, it's going to help you remember what to do. And then it's going to put you in a routine, right? So we want this to become automatic. This is what you do naturally. You're going to go through this and do this all the time. I mean, literally, I do this by rogue now. I don't really think about it anymore. Once I stop and identify, hey, wait. I'm not feeling too well. Let's talk about this, God. And so you want to do it just like it's rope. You just, all the time, it's just what happens. It's repetition and you don't even think about it anymore. And so you're going to need to um, have that experience in order to do that. I highly, highly, highly recommend journaling. That journaling piece is going to let you go back and read where you were a month ago, where you were months ago and where you were a year ago. It's really going to help you to see the growth. It's going to help you identify some things because once you write it down, you'll say, "Mm, I didn't realize that's how I felt. And so writing it down um, is just a, a, a very good avenue to know what's on the inside of you. So I want you all to be encouraged today. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I hope this helped. If it has and you were encouraged by it, please send it to a friend. I want you to share it. Also, click the link below and make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, shake that bell. And once you do that, you will be notified every Tuesday and Friday when we upload. So have a good one. Thank you.